this question is, what's your opinion on Puva light therapy for treating stage 1A MS? Yeah, I'll talk about that. That's um, something we consider using very often. Um, so Puva is a type of phototherapy that involves kind of two steps. One is taking a medication that sensitizes you to UVA radiation. Um, PUVA is probably one of the most long-standing treatments that have been available for CTCL. And so we know a lot about we know that it's quite effective. Um, however, we've also learned that it does significantly increase your risk for skin cancers. And so in general, if um, we are considering light treatment, um, we often start with something like narrow band UVB, which is just as good for mycosis fungoides, but does not carry that risk of increased um, skin cancers down the line. With that said, for patients who might not have had improvement with Naraban UVB, PUVA is sort of the next step that we go to to stick with the phototherapy. So it certainly has a role to play for treating mycosis fungoides, um, especially for someone who has um, many spots in many different locations, especially if they haven't improved on other forms of treatment. As a first line treatment, um, I can imagine there, there could be circumstances in which one would consider PUVA first, but because of the risk of skin cancer, I tend to personally use it a little bit later on after patients have tried some other um, options. And I've heard NB UVB can bring spots to the surface and almost seem to make skin worse before better. On average, how long does it get, does it get worse before the skin starts clearing? It's a great question, and it's actually really important to keep that in mind. And I would say sometimes even taking a hot shower can immediately make the skin look a lot worse. And so we think part of it might just be that the increased warmth and blood flow to the skin might make spots that were always there just more notice necessarily that it's making the disease worse. I would say because it takes roughly about three months before we start seeing improvement with phototherapy, we would tolerate things getting worse within those three months. Again, there's limits to how much we're, we're comfortable with um, becoming more active during that time. With that said, we often prescribe topical steroids for someone to use while they're also doing phototherapy just to keep comfortable and try to keep those mild flares under control while we get you on more stable dosing for the phototherapy. So our next question is, what is the consensus on maintenance NB UVB for early stages or only treat of lesions when lesions appear? I mean, there is no consensus on maintenance narrowband UV. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of uh, controversy. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people, I mean, I think we all agree that once you, I mean, UVB works very well for patients with patch or plaque stage uh, disease, mycosis fungoides, number one. Now, once you get a good result, I think everybody pretty much agrees that you need to consolidate the good results by prolonging the therapy at least another three to six months. Now, when to stop the, the treatment is uh, controversial. In my practice, I like to decrease the frequency of treatments. And usually I stop uh, in, in, in Chicago, which obviously we have a long winter here. I stop the treatment of UVB in the summer months uh, once the patients have achieved uh, a, good, a good response. But there is no consensus. I believe that uh, decreasing the frequency of uh, UVB uh, treatments, uh, maintaining the good response is an indication that the patient is doing very well. I do like to slowly decrease the frequency, but again, not everybody is of the same school. So I'd be curious to know if Dr. Gaskin uh, uh, provides maintenance uh, treatment or not uh, on patients on phototherapy. Yes, so, so uh, I completely agree, completely agree. There's no consensus. And in fact, there are several school of thoughts on the subject of maintenance therapy with narrowband UVB. One of them, uh, very strict uh, proponents of maintenance and, and the other is opponents. And so uh, depending on uh, who, who you talk to, you can get two different answers 
But the truth is, as Dr. Guitar said, there is really no data. And we like to base our uh, treatment recommendations based on data. One thing I have to say that, um, you know, during COVID pandemic, uh, we had discontinued uh, narrow band UVB therapy for several patients who were coming to the office. And these people, uh, some of them got the home units, but several of them could not come and stop therapy and they did have relapses. And so this is something that we are publishing now. This is a international society of cutaneous lymphomas publishing a manuscript uh, which describes the experience of interruptions of treatments for patients with cutaneous lymphoma, whether they were on narrowband UVB or anything else. And it looks like maintenance therapy is important, at least it seems from that uh, observation that we made during pandemic that interruption of therapy was leading to disease relapse. And so um, for whatever it's worth, this is something that is in support of school of thought that some maintenance therapy is necessary, but we still don't know for how long it is necessary. And certainly in the summer months when patients can get a just uh, natural light free free light, it's always uh, a good idea to do that. So I'm a 51 year old black woman recently diagnosed with stage 1A MF, I have patches. My treatment consists of doing PUVA light therapy. I'm concerned about the risk factors with PUVA. Would switching my treatment to UVB therapy interfere with my progress? I think this is a great question because it really um, is a good discussion to have directly with your primary provider. And I think some of the things that I think about is, you know, if someone is older and if someone is of a darker skin type where actually the risk is far lower, um, then you know, the risk of PUVA is actually probably not as significant um, as someone who has very fair skin and can easily burn. So it's definitely a different risk benefit discussion. Um, I would say that narrowband UVB absolutely can be used for um, stage 1A MF, even in individuals who are darker skinned. Um, so I do think there's still some benefit to be derived from narrowband UVB. But one thing that I've seen with PUVA is that the benefit of um, it's possible that over the long term, some folks are able to keep their disease in deeper remission and go to treatments at greater intervals with PUVA than with narrowband UVB. So for example, with narrowband UVB, you're often on it three days a week for several weeks to months, and then that slowly gets tapered. And if someone requires maintenance therapy with narrowband UVB, you might go on it for a week. Um, with PUVA, sometimes you're able to get away with doing it once a month. So in that sense, there's much more to be desired um, with PUVA than there is with narrowband UVB. And not all MF is the same. There's some MF that's very thin. There's some that's thicker. And for thicker disease, PUVA is better. So again, it's a difficult question to answer because it all depends on your individual risk benefit profile and then specifics about the disease. I am going through phototherapy and notice the lesions seem to be lighter some days, darker than others. Is this normal? What should I expect? So I'm gonna say, yes, that's normal. So I like to tell patients who start phototherapy that their lesions will change um, during successful therapy. So I often say lesions will get worse with therapy because the light is kind of bringing out the disease that we can see and the disease that we can't see. And so often um, lesions will become more pink or red in response to the phototherapy. The darkness that you're describing, usually that's when the phototherapy is successful and the lesions are going away 
and the inflammation has left kind of what we call post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. That means that the melanocytes have been kind of activated during um, therapy and by the disease itself and leaves behind some melanin, kind of a stain to the skin. So often lesions become darker. And then as far as lesions becoming lighter, um, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but um, we do want the, the lesions to lighten out. So go from a pink and red to a normal skin color or a darker hyperpigmented um, lesion to eventually a normal skin color. Yeah, maybe I'll just add, you know, Dr. Pacheco always likes to say when we see patients together, that it's really important to sort of understand an individual's skin because I think everybody's a little bit different in terms of how their skin, of course, looks and their pigmentation in their skin. And, and really, there are different, different types of mycosis fungoides, and that can look different in the skin. For an example, some people have uh, what we call hypopigmented mycosis fungoides, where you know they lose the pigment. And that's very different than other individuals where it presents as classically sort of a red, itchy rash. Uh, and sometimes the rash is flat where you can't you know, feel it. And sometimes it's a bit thicker or rough. And there are still other subtypes where, you know, the skin can even kind of look sort of wrinkly or, you know, they're just different kinds that Dr. Pacheco, you know, being a dermatologist certainly appreciates much better than myself. And that's why it's it's really nice to sort of for us both to see patients and to have sort of the expertise of both dermatologists and an oncologist that can help um, help treat you and, and make sure that we're identifying, you know, how you're or ensuring that you're responding well to the therapy. And if there is a progression or, or the skin's getting worse, we really want to make sure that it's a progression and not just like Dr. Pacheco was saying that um, where the skin may be changing colors or changing its um changing the way it looks because of the light therapy when really it's responding. Is combining phototherapy and regular sun exposure recommended? Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I will tell you before we were able to get home phototherapy units um, and patients did not have access to a, you know, a hospital based or clinic based phototherapy um, unit, we would often counsel on you know, getting natural sun exposure during peak hours. So peak hours are between 10 and 3 p.m. And anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes um, of full body exposure. So like, you know, the entire legs or the entire back or the entire front side of natural sun exposure is thought to be therapeutic um, for patients with certain skin diseases, not just cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. And then of our Patients that are on phototherapy, um, I do think just in general, dermatologists counsel against sun protection, and we view phototherapy as the treatment modality. Um, phototherapy is often um, a specific wavelength of light, like narrowband UVB is 311 nanometers, and we prefer that, um, and then we prefer protecting the normal skin from regular sun exposure, which is the entire spectrum of UVB and UVA and potentially some UVC.